Welcome to Gyropalooza 2023. I'm Brad Richardson, co-founder and operations director here at MVP. I'm Chad Richardson, co-founder, uh, chief engineer. Well, what a year it has been, 2023. It has been another wild ride. Obviously, everyone knows that 2020, 2021, 2022 were some really crazy years for disc golf. 2023 was no exception. Obviously, with the historic signing of Simon Lazat to Team MVP, is really uh, really transformed MVP uh, in, in the disc golf market. We've been sprinting to keep up with the demand as we have been for the last few years. It's been a very exciting ride for both us and Simon, really. You know, it's really been a new venture for us and we're very excited to be uh, carrying on this uh, relationship with Simon for the long term. You might have noticed compared to our previous Gyropalooza events that we are in a new space here. We are in our newly expanded warehouse. Uh, we, we've been building this for the last two years. As MVP has grown significantly in the last two years, we've needed a lot more space. So here we are, we're in the new space. We're getting very close to getting our permit to move operations into here. Uh, the building that we're in here is actually connected to our original facility. So what originally was our facility will become all of our manufacturing. This space is gonna become all of our warehouse and distribution. So both operations will have significantly more space to operate and it will help just our overall efficiency and uh, just overall capacity of what we can move through here at HQ. Uh, we've overall been very tight on space just because we have grown so quickly and we've had to, you know, didn't have much extra space until now. So we're excited to finally start moving in. Our customer service, our marketing, our administrative staff, We've been very limited in offices. We're finally gonna have some offices for them. It'll be a much, much more comfortable environment than an open warehouse that, that they're currently in. So overall, it'll be an enhancement for them as well. This year, we have a, a lot of new products to talk about, just like every year. Um, but I would like to start with a lot of our discs. You know, we always you know, have a lot of new molds, a lot of plastic combinations. Uh, this year, another new line with Simon line. So we'd like to overview uh, what we have for discs. Um, as you all know, uh, with James Conrad, we have a number of molds that we've built in the James Conrad lineup. Um, now this year, we have Simon on board and we are introducing Simon Line. Starting with the time lapse, um, the first mold in the Simon Line, you know, we couldn't be more excited. Uh, this is our first 12 speed distance driver. It's a perfect fit for someone with Simon's caliber, speed 12 distance driver in his line. It's a, it's a dream come true for Simon and us. We're proud to have uh, gotten here and here we are, it's in our hands. Simon's been throwing it. Uh, we're very excited to release this into the world. Our feedback from Simon, when we sent him the initial prototypes, his response, perfect. <laughs> yeah. He really, he seemed really happy. And uh, same thing with the, uh, the next mold in his lineup. Uh, such, a, such a cool experience to watch him see the pixel for the first time. He just, he just seemed absolutely floored with it. Um, it, was, it was really neat to see. I think Chad really nailed it with, with these designs here. When we brought Simon on board, one of the first things we did was sit down and talk about the Simon line. We knew right away it was something we were gonna be doing. Uh, so we took his feedback early and started the mold development process right away. Uh, the time lapse, you know, a lot of back and forth, a lot of good feedback from Simon himself. Uh, it's, it's an honor to sit down and listen to high caliber feedback that we need to execute such a critical uh, pinnacle mold in his line. So it's just been an incredible journey and it feels really good to have it in our hands, finished product. The next mold in Simon's lineup, and he just started putting with it in this uh, USDGC, is the Pixel. Uh, the Pixel, uh, along with the time lapse, we started the development process actually at the same time. Uh, this is his putting putter. We all know when you have a new lineup, you need a putting putter. and. Putters in particular take a very keen eye on how it's going to fit in your hand, the plastic, and how it's going to react on your putting form. And so the feedback on the Pixel is actually a fair bit more in depth uh, based on that hand feel because putters just have to feel right. And Simon was very pleased. Uh, when we first gave him the prototype, his immediate first reaction was looking at the profile and saying, it is perfect. So. It's a great weight off our shoulders to make sure we 
design things to our player specifications and to see Simon's response was, uh, was a very good feeling. So yeah, Chad did a phenomenal job with design meeting Simon's request. Simon was very specific with what he wanted in both the time lapse and the pixel. Very specific about the depth, the dome, just the overall feel of the plastic. He was very specific and Chad really nailed all of those really strict specifications perfectly. It's really what we're good at. We are a disc golf manufacturer that know how to make high caliber discs. So that was, I think, one of the big draws that brought Simon on board was our capabilities to make precision, high quality disc golf discs. And it's a, it's a dream come true to be able to sit down with these top level players, listen to their feedback and design molds to meet their specifications. It's just ultimately rewarding at the end of the day. Uh, moving on to a couple of new additions for James Conrad lineup of discs. You know, he's got several molds already. Uh, we've got two new additions this year. The first one being the Detour. This is a mid-range. This is his first mid-range in his lineup. This mid-range, uh, the design goal was to fill a gap between the MVP Uplink and Axiom Hex. It's a small gap that we always knew we could always fill and James Conrad expressed some interest and we, you know, went back and forth and sat down with the design process and we now have a finished product. Moving on from the Detour mid-range, we now have a Speed 10 uh, distance driver for James Conrad. This is the Trail. The goal here was to introduce the first 10 speed into any of our uh, MVP Axiom and Streamline lineups. So James Conrad, he wanted something that would be a complement to some of his current drivers in his lineups. Some of his drivers are a little bit on the overstable side for some of the market. Great for his game, but we wanted to bring something a little bit more accessible to a wider audience in the disc golf space, and the trail is that. Uh, this 10 speed is a stable straight category, um, modest power requirement, but it still has a very good shoulder, very good dome with lots of glides. So it's not something that's going to be as overstable as some of his existing molds. So it's a, it's a great compliment for his lineup. So every year with Gyropalooza, we always, one of our favorite things is curating an awesome package for our Gyronauts. Really try to create an awesome package of discs, of unique discs, uh, and also just making a very affordable disc. An affordable way for anyone, any new Gyronaut to really get their hands on lots of new discs. This year, we have made five new stamps for gyro, the Gyropalooza pack. This is a record for us. Normally, we only do one or two stamps, but we've got five stamps from five different artists. So we have got a very big selection here in this pack. So we've really packed this full. First and foremost, the Eclipse Glitch. This one is probably one of the most heavily demanded options in our product lineup. The glitch has been insane with demand. It is such a unique disc. Something that we knew early on was something very unique and special, but it definitely has blown our expectations as far as the demand for the for this uh, hybrid catch disc. It's great for on the course, those touch approach shots, but also it's a disc golf disc that you can catch with. It's fantastic. And now with the glow, with Eclipse 2.0, you can play catch at night. Here's a new, recently familiar plastic that we've got in the Gyro Palooza pack. It is Eclipse R2 Neutron. R2 Neutron is about sustainability in our process. All of the scrap material from our process gets recycled and reprocessed and makes R2 Neutron. It's a very important part of sustainability. It, make, it ensures that we don't have to send any of our plastic in the landfill. It allows us to fully utilize all of our raw materials. And so our mission is sustainability. This has allowed us to achieve that by being able to make product with that waste material. But with it being the gyro, we can do something really fun and unique with that overmold. And this time we're gonna be adding Eclipse rims onto the R2 Neutron plastic. As you know, we've started making color glow. So there's now five different glow colors. There's green glow, blue glow, aqua glow, purple glow, and white glow. So these three discs will have an assorted range of color glow. And it's a random mixture in every pack. Some, some people may get multiples of certain colors or you may get all different colors. We're gonna try to give as much variety of Eclipse rims on these Eclipse R2 Neutron models. They're all three are Axiom. We got the Envy, the Hex, and the Crave. Three very popular discs. 
uh, in the Axiom lineup. And they're all gonna have the different colors of glow in the rim. And uh, one last item in the Gyropalooza pack. We've got a prototype detour of the James Conrad lineup. Another one here, art by Michael Ramoneskis. Very cool art. And uh, very excited to feature this mold as Chad was talking about. This, this mold kind of fills a key spot in our lineup between the very popular Hex and Uplink. There's a little bit of a gap in that. This mold will be perfect for that gap. So this will be your first chance to get the detour here in this pack. In the Gyropalooza pack, there will be some more uh, lab second discs. These discs are one of the most affordable ways to get started with gyro. So these discs here just have minor cosmetic imperfections. Uh, overall, the, the cosmetic issues were so minor that it didn't warrant having to reprocess it and recycle it. So between Eclipse R2 Neutron and lab seconds, it's really all about our mission for sustainability. That was a big focus of this. Lab seconds in Gyropalooza has always been a feature. Uh, this year, there's going to be four of the lab seconds. It's a random selection of discs. They all are great performing discs, just minor cosmetic issues. And overall, the goal of the Gyropalooza pack is to offer a lot of value for your purchase. It's a big purchase, so we want to make sure you've got a lot of product. Overall, with a retail price of $130, for a large collection of discs, averaging about $11 a disc, it's a very affordable pack. We're experimenting with some different stamps. We've been trying trying some different looks, um, trying to add a little bit more, little more style into into the artwork there, kind of a little bit more, a little more uh, activity there. Before it's been just kind of a plain stamp. We made a full size stamp in previous years. Some people wanted to see the smaller offset, so we're kind of going to try this option here. It's a sm another small offset, but yet it's got a little bit more activity there. Not so plain. I think it looks great. Really fits any color that you can imagine that you would get out of a lead second disc. In addition, with the, uh, the Pro Shop going under construction, we still have a lot of inventory from the MVP Pro Shop. So you will also have a couple random discs from that selection. A lot of unique runs, various artist series, very, various uh, team MVP discs that will be dispersed randomly into the Gyropalooza pack. So we're excited to feature those into the packs as well. Uh, to kind of move on from molds, uh, just a small thing with some of our plastics and swirls I wanted to touch on. Um, several years ago, we developed uh, Cosmic Neutron into our core as a plastic line. Uh, great, beautiful swirls in the core in the center of the disc. Um, I've been working on a technology to implement that into the overmold so we can get great swirls in the overmold. Uh, wasn't successful at first, um, but with this last attempt this year, we've been able to, I believe, nail it because the color swirls we've been able to get in the overmold are quite dramatic. Very high contrast of colors, a lot of uh, variety and combinations of the colors that we can do. So it's been really exciting to see and push our limits on you know, the color swirls in the overmold. Uh, and with great timing, uh, the Simon line, you know, Simon with his vlogs loves high contrast color discs because it makes it easier to film. Uh, his line is going to see a lot of swirls with it being the Axiom lineup. Beyond the swirl overmold, uh, a little bit more subtle, but we've been able to introduce um, a new color effect in proton cores. So this is an example of a silver metallic inside of a blue light blue proton core. Uh, another example being a light blue metallic in a light blue core. The combination of transparents and metallics swirl together in the core was kind of our goal. And we achieved this randomly. I wouldn't say every single core is this way, but it's just another you know introduction to a color effect that's a little bit random into the proton lines. Overall, we'll expand the amount of options that you'll see in the proton plastic. We will still have a lot of the standard proton plastic, the nice candy plastic, but also we're gonna be, some runs will have, will feature some of these, uh, we like to call them the cat's eye marble effect, where it's got the metallic color kind of uh, swirled throughout there. Kind of looks like a cosmic, but still overall is a, is a proton plastic. 
And, and these you know, two color technologies are just a, a stem off of our goal to apply automation to our factory. Uh, doing this by hand is very difficult, but we've been automating a lot of our processes that give us greater control to introduce these colors. And it's been you know, a remarkable journey to you know, be able to have that control and precision to implement it to disks. And the result is dramatic, you know, very exciting. As you can see, we've got a lot of new products here to talk about, not only just the discs, but just a whole range of disc golf products. Uh, as a whole, we've got a very comprehensive lineup. You can see we've got baskets, we've got bags, various accessories that are new. Also, you'll see we've got the disc station as well as some new sizes. We've got the disc station two, the disc station six, and we also have a disc station three right over here. So we're gonna be able to talk about those a little bit more today. Here's another product that we are very excited about. This is the disc frame. A nice way to display your most prized collectibles here in a nice frame to protect your disc. It has a machined little, little hole there so you can hang it on the wall very easily. It's got a nice magnetic lid that you can very easily take the disc out and it snaps right on there and you just hook it right on the wall. So very easy to exchange discs out of here. One thing we felt was very important for the disc frame was to fit as many discs as possible out there because there's a lot of different discs with varying dome, varying diameters. So this disc will fit the vast majority of PDJ approved discs. In fact, it, it should hold every single disc in the NB Axiom Streamline lineup. If you are not sure about your disc, if it will fit in the case on the packaging, we have the inside dimension shown right there. 22 centimeters by 22 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters. So as long as it, as long as the disc fits within that space, it will fit in the disc frame. We're excited to finally bring back the stools. We made a lot of improvement to the overall quality and build strength. These are definitely our most strongly built stools that we've made. The other stools before were more focused on being compact, fitting in your bag. The big focus on these was overall strength and durability. These are very high quality. It was a big emphasis was the overall build quality. And that was, that was priority that we executed. Very happy with the finished product. They are nearing the end of production and you can expect these in the near coming months. We've got three colors here. We've got the heather gray, a nice heather blue, as well as a traditional black. So three new options available soon. We have a new uh, Voyager bag refresh. Uh, we have the James Conrad edition bags. Uh, here, our goal was to sit down with James and shout out to Mike Inchko, our art director. He, he, he talked through James about what color options and branding and style that James was looking, looking for. And uh, we have the khaki version, the olive version and plum color. Uh, these colors are just a, you know, a whole new look, a whole new theme that really uh, appealed to James' uh, vision on his branding uh, with the elements of the Nomad hot stamp. You know, it was just a great touch. We've got the world champion patch up top. This design of the Voyager bag, it's, it's, it's a refresh of the, the Voyager 2.0. It's still the Cordura 1000D material, military grade material. Overall, this material will last a lifetime. Uh, really high quality materials. The, the Voyager Pro, the regular Voyager, and the Voyager Slim are the highest caliber in our lineup. Uh, three colors as well as three sizes. So it's gonna be the same Voyager Pro, Voyager, Voyager Slim that we previously had in this lineup, but each of them will also got these three color options. The, the weight on these bags are up to eight to 10% lighter than the prior ones. So it's a considerable weight reduction, but overall there was no compromise to the structural, uh, overall just lighter and easier to carry, but still very rigid structure um, that will support your disc for a lifetime. As many of you may know, we have a very comprehensive line of baskets. We have a, a large variety of disc golf practice baskets. Essentially, these are backyard disc golf baskets. They're very portable. You can disassemble them and store them, reassemble them, move them around. Um, they don't mount permanently into the ground like your course baskets do. But we've, we've got 
many models, but one very common feedback we've been hearing about the baskets is they're quite loud. That chain that hits that center pole is, is the loudest uh, part of that basket. And so we have made a sleeve to go over that center pole that really reduces the sound. And that is what we call the black hole sound barrier, compatible with all black hole baskets in our lineup. The black hole portal is a coarse basket that the first version was too small to fit. But we actually have a version two that fits on the coarse baskets. So you can expect those to come in the future. Uh, by next year, we should have a version two of the sound barrier that will work for the coarse baskets as well. This is the first offering in the disc station lineup. This is the disc station six for its six levels of storage. Uh, overall, this holds a lot of discs. And uh, common feedback we were getting was the price point is a little high, but it is a very big rack, storage rack. Not everyone needs a rack this big for their discs. So we felt that in order to offer a better price point, we offered some smaller options that still hold a lot of discs. This is the Disc Station 2 and the Disc Station 3. And as your collection grows, you probably want to add capacity. So we have made add-on modules to increase the capacity of it. This is one, one, one unit. This is another unit. There is an add-on module 2, which is adds two more levels. So you can take a Disc Station 2, make it like a Disc Station 4 or a Disc Station 6. This product here is an example of the add-on module 3. You'll see there are three shelves. These three shelves can be added onto a Disk Station 3 or can be added onto a Disk Station 2 to give your smaller rack more storage capacity. It allows you to start out small on your budget and add on as needed. Or if you've got a giant collection for a Disk Station 6, these are on sale on Black Friday. They will be 40% off. They will only be $120. So if you've got a big collection, that will be your, your opportunity to get a good deal on this. The price will be going up after that, but there will be a price drop. Instead of $200, they will now be $150, but they will be on sale this holiday season if you wanted to get the best deal possible. Overall, nothing compares to the build quality of a disc station. It is very heavily built to withstand as many discs that you can fit on here. This, this top rack here also adds more storage. You can add bags, more accessories, trophies, whatever you have, you can add to the top shelf here. Even more stacks of discs. You can add more stacks of discs to any of these. Overall, storage was the biggest goal for this product. A way to offer more efficient storage, but still have access to your storage. I know um, a common storage practice is to store them into boxes and to your closet. But the problem with that is not very accessible. You've got to open up all your boxes to get to them. The goal of this was to make it so that any disc was accessible, but still very compact in its storage. Well, that concludes the main event here at Gyropalooza. But we got more, we got the Q&A. We took your questions and we will be answering as many as we can. And uh, wow, what some great questions you guys had. Uh, I really enjoyed looking through them, kind of allows me to understand what, what you guys are wanting to know. And, and, and so we look forward to really addressing a lot of these questions. So stay tuned uh, for the Q&A coming up soon.